In VR, it can be particularly difficult to constrain a player to a space, given that you can't control the actions that a player will do with their arms or their head. And sometimes this is pretty important if you want to keep players from seeing what's, go what's beyond that locked door over there and teleporting through. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up a very simple collision player that will allow for you to collide with the environment, as well as even add in a couple of interesting mechanics such as ducking under objects or things of that nature. But before we go ahead and jump into that, if you enjoyed this tutorial and want to see more just like this one, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And with that, let's go and jump right into the video. Now looking here at the scene, I've already gone ahead and set up a very something very basic that we'll be able to use to test this at the end. Um, I have a wall that I'll be able to walk into and it should push me off. And then I also just set up a very basic uh, kind of plank that we'll be able to duck under and kind of sit underneath it. So, um, but th this isn't important for the main chunk of what we'll be doing. So let's go and start off by actually creating our character. So we're gonna go and create a new folder here real quick, call it blueprints. And we go and open that up. And I want to create a new blueprint class called character. And I'm just going to call this collision VR character. I think that'll be nice and basic. Now the reason we're using a character is actually because of this capsule component that the character has. Now this capsule component we can actually use so that way when we bump into something it'll push back and actually we don't need to add anything additional for that. It should actually naturally push us back away from whatever it is we're colliding with. The, the main issue that we typically have when trying to use a character is that our this capsule component will typically sit roughly at the center of our play space. In this case, I'll be using a valve index, so it'll be sitting in the set roughly where it considers to be the center of my Steam VR play spaces. Um, in this case, we're actually going to modify our whole character so that way this capsule will actually move around with the rest of our player in its own space. So we're gonna have quite a bit of work in order to get all this set up, but it should work pretty nicely once we're all said and done here. So, all that out of the way, let's go and start by adding in a couple components here. So I'm gonna start by adding in a camera component, and I'm just gonna call this VR camera. This camera component is going to be for our player's view, but what we're going to end up doing is I'm gonna come in here and I wanna look up HMD. And you should find a checkbox here that says locked HMD. I wanna uncheck that. What this will typically do is when we start up in VR, in a VR headset, our camera will automatically lock to our head mounted display and then it will naturally move around with us. We don't want to do this because what we're going to end up doing is getting that information ourselves and then manually controlling where our camera is as well as how to move around our capsule components. That way we can bind them all and it should all work very nicely together. Next, I want to add in a scene component here. And I'm just going to call this um, hand origin origin now what this is going to be for is we need to separate off our hands somewhat um, in a sense so what's actually ended up happening here is we need our hands to always be at the correct spot because we're going to be moving around our capsule component and this is where it kind of considers to be the origin point is then we're actually going to have an issue where our hands are going to appear typically really high above us and typically somewhere behind us or in front of us, somewhere way outside of where it's supposed to be, unless we're staying right in the center of our play space. So we're gonna use this hand origin to determine where our hands should be centered around. And that's gonna be determined by wherever the center of our play space is. Next, I'm going to go and add in a couple of motion controllers. Uh, these should be pretty self-explanatory at this point. These are just going to be to see where our hands are. So I'm just gonna call these motion controller left and motion controller right. And you wanna make sure that both of those are attached to hand origin. Cause like I said, we're going to be modifying the, the hand origin so that way these will show up in the correct spot. Then I'm gonna come right in here. I'm just gonna go in and set our display device model here. I'm gonna use the Vive pre-controller mesh. There we go. And then I also want to go and set our motion control right here to motion source right. We don't need to do anything additional to the motion controllers. Aside from attaching them to this hand origin, everything is going to be completely standard for these motion controller components. So now that we're all done here setting up our components, let's go and jump into our event graph. Now I've already gone ahead and moved the two nodes that we're not going to end up using. 
We are only going to end up using the event tick. Everything that we're gonna be doing here is gonna run through the event tick since we want for it to run as frequently as possible. Um, but before we go ahead and do anything here, I wanna actually separate things into their own functions because we're gonna have quite a bit going on and so I think separating it out will be a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go and head down here and create a new function. This is gonna be called camera transform. Now this isn't, to be honest, perfectly accurate as to what we're gonna be doing. We're only gonna be saying some of the values of the location rotation of our camera. So it's not perfectly accurate, but it should still get the point across, no problem. So let's go ahead and start by getting orientation and position. Now what this will do is if we actually mouse over this, it tells us that this is from the head mounted display function library. And what it does is it grabs the orientation position of the HMD. And this is actually relevant to wherever the origin of our tracking space in, is. In this case, like I said, I'm using Steam VR. So my tracking space is gonna be on the floor, roughly in the center of where my play space is. That's where it's gonna consider my origin to be. So it's going to take my head mounted display and orient, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this to get where our head mounted display is within the play space and use that to modify our whole character. So let's go and start here. I'm going to start by splitting up our struct pins here. Um, actually, I'll, I'll do the rotation second because th this is gonna get messy enough as it is. So let's go and grab our VR camera and I'm going to set a relative location and rotation. And what we're going to end up doing is we're only going to end up modifying some of the values here. We're not going to assign all X, Y, and Z location values, nor are we going to uh, put in all X, Y, and Z location, uh, rotation values or anything like that. We're only going to be modifying some of these values. The rest of them we're going to be modifying on the capsule component. So that way we can make sure the capsule component moves around with us. So let's go and start here by splitting also our location pins here. And we're only going to end up passing through our device position C. However, we want to add a modification to this. So I want to subtract our Z value here. And I want to subtract it by getting our capsule component and getting the half height, the capsule half height. The reason for this is our half height actually does kind of mess around with our uh, with how our head mounted display and all that actually shows up because it actually raises up the origin point of the whole character. So we wanna make sure that we actually decrease that half height so that way we still show up at the correct height. So I'm going to go and subtract that and I'm going to set that to our new location Z. And that's pretty simple for our location. Our rotation is also gonna be pretty simple. All we're going to be passing through is, let me go and split that struct pin, is our X, and we're going to be passing through our Y. We're going to leave our Z alone. Again, we're going to be modifying that on our capsule components. That way our capsule component will always face with our character. So we're not going to worry about the Z here. So that's all we need to do here for our camera transform. So coming back into our event graph, I'm going to go ahead and run that first, just like that. So now we've taken care of our camera, let's go ahead and move on to moving our capsule. And our capsule is going to be our whole character because this is the root component. So this is also gonna determine our location and moving around our collision with us. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna create a new function here. And I'm going to call this capsule, ooh, capsule transform. Again, this probably isn't gonna be perfectly accurate, but it still gets the point across. So, for a capsule transform, we're gonna be doing some of the same things. So let's go ahead and start by uh, getting orientation and position. And I'm going to start with our position. Our, our position is gonna be nice and easy to set up here, I think. So we're going to set, uh, let, let me see it, set local actor offset. Set, set actor local offset. That's what we want. So we wanna set our actor local offset. Uh, we're gonna be using this in order to offset our character so our capsule component will move around with our character rather than having our VR camera move around instead of in, in our place. So I'm gonna go and split this truck pin here as well. And we're actually going to be only passing through our X and our Y. But before we do this, we wanna do some modifications to each of these as well. So I'm gonna create a new variable here and I'm going to call this stored location. I wanna make this a vector. I'm gonna go and set this at the end. 
Um, so we're actually going to be setting this at the end after we've set our local offset. And this could be used to help determine if we need to move in a direction and how far we need to move in that direction. So we'll be using this in order to set that location. Um, but before we go ahead and do that, let's go ahead and handle our X and Y here. So we're going to want to take our stored location. I'm again going to split our strike pin. And I'm going to subtract each our X as well as our Y. And we're just going to go and pass that through. And then those are each going to go into their corresponding X, delta location X and delta location Ys. So those will both be pretty simple to set up. And then again, we're just going to want to pass that through here to our stored location. Um, I'm just going to split our strike pin and pass through directly our X and our Y. Uh, if you want, you can pass through the whole vector. It really isn't going to make a difference. We're never going to use the Z. That's the only reason I'm only choosing to pass through the X and Y is because it'll just kind of keep things a little bit simpler. As you can see, we already have quite a mess, uh, a spaghetti mess going on here. So uh, I don't want to make it any more messy, any more complicated or messy than it already is. Now, finally, we're going to be moving on to our rotation. Our rotation is going to, again, be pretty simple. I'm actually going to be simplifying this. I'm going to go and copy over our orientation position, and I'm actually going to recombine these, uh, our positional values. So I'm going to just right click and recombine. And we only want our rotational values for this. So I'm going to set actor rotation, and we're only going to be passing through Z, since that's the only value left that we have to pass through that we weren't passing through on the camera itself. And that will help determine so that way our character is always facing the same way that we are looking. And that'll keep things nice and simple here. So I'm gonna go and compile that, jump back into our event graph, and we're going to go ahead and add that capsule transform so it runs right after camera transform, and we're all good there. Now, one thing I did almost forget here is I actually do want the device position here. Um, this was actually something I'd almost forgotten about and you don't have to do this part, but I think it's really nice and it's, it's honestly a great feature to add in if you wanna force the player to duck under options or uh, under obstacles or anything like that. What I'm going to do here is I'm gonna take our capsule component and I'm going to set our half height of the capsule component. And this is gonna be pretty simple. All we're going to do is take our device position Z, divide that by two, and that will set our half height there. And that will actually make it so that way our capsule will actually scale up and down with us if we decide to crouch or stand up. And this can actually be a really nice feature if you want to be able to crouch underneath obstacles, or maybe if you want to kind of force them to uh, just get down low in order to keep from being detected by enemy AI or anything like that. It's a really nice, simple feature to add in um, that, that does just kind of make things a little bit uh, a little bit nicer. So uh, I am going to add this in. Again, you don't need it, but I like to add in and modify our capsule half height. So now we're saying our camera and capsule. Finally, we have to move on to our hand origin since this is going to determine our whole hand positioning and make sh making sure that all that works correctly. So I'm going to create one last function here and I'm just going to call this hand offset um, since I think that this is a little bit more accurate as to what we're going to be doing here. So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to take our hand rotation and I want to set world location and rotation. Um, and the reason that we're saying this in the world is we want to make sure that this moves relative to the world, not to the pawn, just to make sure that everything stays nice and simple and uh, it all works nice and easy. So um, this is going to look like a huge mess. It's honestly not as difficult as what it's going to look like, um, but this is going to look like quite a bit of a mess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get our actor location and this is going to be in the world, so that way we're, we're still dealing with the same thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract this vector. And what we're going to subtract it by, I'm going to split this real quick, and we're going to get our orientation ooh, and position. And for our position, I'm going to go and split that. We're going to pass through our X and our Y here. For our Z, however, I want to grab our capsule component, and I want to get the half height and that's going to be for our Z. This will make sure that it stays ground level, um, or not necessarily ground level, if you're falling, then that'll be a different story, but it will stay level with the player itself, so that way it will be in the correct position. 
And that's all that we need to do for our location. Now that we've handled our location, let's move on to our rotation. So I'm going to start by splitting our struct pin for our rotation. We're only going to be passing through Z and I'll explain why in just one second. But before I go ahead and explain that, we're going to get our actor rotation. I'm going to split that struct pin. And then I'm also going to get our orientation position again, because I'm going to try and keep this nice and simple. So I'm going to recombine that and just get our rotation here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract our return value Z from our device rotation Z here. And that's going to go into Z value. Now, the reason we're only modifying the Z value is because in most cases, your character is going to be uh, pretty level with uh, with the world itself. It's going to be flat. It's typically not going to rotate very much if at all So that's the reason we're only modifying the Z is because this will make sure that rotates with our player on the Z axis But it won't tilt in any direction Now if you are going to have a character that is going to be tilting left right forward back Then at that point then you may want to come back in here and modify the X and the Y's yourself because at that point, the hand location won't always be accurate with where your hands are. They'll probably be off to your left, right, forward, or back. Um, so you do wanna make sure that you will come back here if you're going to have your character rotate. But like I said, that's honestly not something that happens very often, so I'm just gonna leave that be here. So finally, let's go ahead, jump into our event graph. Um, I'm going to go and run hand offset. That's gonna be the last thing we run here. Compile and save all that. And I'm gonna come right in here to our level, drop in our collision VR character, jump into our details here. And I wanna make sure that we auto possess our player zero and auto receive input from player zero. And that is all that we need to do here. And that's our character all set up. So I'm gonna go and jump into VR and we can go and give this a quick little look and see how all this functions. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've jumped into VR. So um, you can see I have a full on wall here over, over here and a beam that I'm gonna see if I can get under. That's actually underneath, uh, that's actually a little bit outside my play space. So I may have to fool around a little bit in order to get close enough to that. <laughs> um, but let's go and start here with the wall. So um, before I actually go and run into that too, in case you're curious, what SteamVR considers to be the origin point is roughly right about here. Um, I don't think I have any way really of showing, yeah, I don't think I have any way of showing where the origin point is, um, at least in the way that Unreal Engine is up right now. But if I go ahead and run right into the wall, ooh, you can see it, it does keep pushing me back. Um, and it, it does keep pushing me back, so it won't actually let me go into the wall at all, I'm actually hitting a wall. <laughs> I'm actually hitting a physical wall over here, but it's not letting me through the wall in any way. Um, so it just doesn't like me going through that. Now with this beam, let me see real quick if I can set up my standing position over here so that way I can get in there. There we go. So you can see if I run into this again, it's it's pushing me away when when I get too close to it. But if I go and crouch down and slide underneath it, at this point. Oh, I have cables. <laughs> At this point, you can see that I can get underneath it. Um, I actually don't know what'll happen if I try to stand. Um, this doesn't feel right. <laughs> um, yeah, st standing I think is doing something weird. Um, I feel like I'm maybe slightly sinking into the floor a little bit. So um, don't try and stand underneath things. <laughs> Um, because this is doing something weird. Oh, oh no, that's interesting. Okay, so no, it's just not letting me raise up any more, I don't think. So, um, but that should kind of give you an idea of how the capsule component is working. And I can come right back out here and run right into the wall again. You can see it's pushing me away again. Um, and I can keep following it all the way until I hit another wall over there. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so there we go. That is player collisions um, on a VR player. And with that, that's how we give a player a very simple capsule collision within a character and have that capsule move around with the player so that way they're able to collide it with walls or be able to slide underneath obstacles. With that, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And also, I'll give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters who you should see right over here on the right-hand side. And with that, 
I'll see you in the next reality.